So the number one lacrosse recruit in 2010 was Nikki Galasso, an attackman out of West Islip in Long Island. The man had a ridiculous 500 points in his high school career, the most by any player ever in Long Island at the time. He also had the record for the most goals in a game with 11. Can you imagine scoring 11 goals? That's more than many teams score at the end of a game. And he did it in one. Needless to say, Galasso came into college lacrosse with plenty of hype and he took his talents to UNC and played for the Tar Heels. As a freshman, Galasso completely completely delivered. He won ACC Freshman of the Year and broke the record for points at UNC as a freshman with 56. He scored a casual 7 points to help UNC beat Maryland at College Park for the first time in 8 years. He also gained 3rd team All-American honor, which is very rare for a freshman to do. The man was completely living up to every expectation, and then injury struck. During a conditioning drill during the fall of his sophomore year, Golasso fractured his foot and was sidelined for 2 months. He came back and recovered from his injury by the time the season started. Started, but he pretty much only played man up and only had nine points. So then Galasso transferred closer to home to Syracuse to finish out his college lacrosse career. As a junior, he earned a spot on the second line midfield and tallied 17 points. But as a senior, he broke out to more of his normal self and got second team All-American honors as a midfielder tallying 45 points. It was certainly an up and down career as far as injuries go for Galasso, but to me, he met expectations having two All-American seasons. It still makes you wonder though, without the foot injury, Galasso Lasso might have been an all-time great. In 2011, the number one lacrosse recruit was Lyle Thompson from Lafayette High School. Well, unless you just started getting into lacrosse, which if you are, welcome to the channel, then you know that Lyle Thompson will go down in lacrosse history as one of the greatest players of all time. He went to school at UAlbany, breaking the college lacrosse record for career points with 400, and was the first person to ever win back-to-back -to -back Torton trophies, basically like winning the Heisman twice in a row. Now as a pro, he's leading the Premier Lacrosse League in points and is widely considered one of the best in the world. This is probably the easiest decision out there. Lyle Thompson exceeded every expectation and then multiply that by 100. And by the way, I'm making an exclusive community of lacrosse players called Lax Now. We'll have our own group chat, weekly film breakdowns, and college and pro player Q&A sessions. So if you want to be on the waitlist for Lax Now, go check out the link in the description or just go to laxnow.co. Now let's get back to the video. In 2012, the number one recruit was Case Mathias, an attackman out of Darien, Connecticut, Committed to Duke. Case's highlight reel is one of the most all time viewed highlights on YouTube, and he certainly came into Duke with a ton of hype. Despite being a little undersized at 5'7, he used his quick feet and high lacrosse IQ to shred some of the best high school defenses in the country, and he seemed poised to continue his success in college. And during his freshman year in 2013, he delivered. He started 16 of 23 games at attack and ranked third on the team in points with 52. He led the entire ACC rookie class in points per game, and he even scored the game winner against Loyola in the playoffs to ultimately send Duke to a national championship in 2013. Inside Lacrosse ranked him the best freshman in the nation and things were working out just as they were supposed to. Unfortunately after that, Case never really took the next step, garnering 42 points during his sophomore year and 39 points during his junior year. He finished out his senior season strong with a career high of 57 points, but he never became an All-American. For almost anyone's standards, Case Mathias had a great college lacrosse career. I mean, he was a four-year starter at Duke and a two-time national champion, but as a number one recruit, he performed below expectations. Case is still one of my favorite lacrosse players of all time, and I would love to get dinner with him one day. And next up in 2013, the number one recruit was Jordan Evans from Jamesville DeWitt High School, committed to Syracuse. Jordan was famously known to be next in line to wear the story number 22, and after tallying nearly 400 points in high school, it was obvious he had the talent to do so. Evans was also ranked number one above Matt Rambo, a player who you might have heard of if you're a lacrosse fan. Evans immediately earned playing time as a freshman, getting on the second line midfield and getting two points. Although he had a slow start for a number one recruit, he still got playing time for a top team and things definitely could turn around for him. Unfortunately though, he never really hit his stride and scored 12 points as a sophomore, 35 as a junior, and 44 as a senior, finishing with 93 points for his career. Although he definitely contributed to Syracuse, as a number one recruit, he performed below expectations. Then in 2014, the number one recruit, Shaq Stanwick came along, an attackman from Boys Latin. Shaq was in the illustrious line of Stanwicks who went on to have incredible college lacrosse careers. His brother Steele graduated from Virginia as one of the greatest players ever. His brother Wells was a top recruit on the Hopkins team already, and his sister Sheehan graduated Georgetown as one of the greatest women's lacrosse players. Long story short, everyone knew the Stanwicks and Shackleford, or Shaq as everyone called him, was next in line. He burst onto the college lacrosse scene as a freshman at Hopkins and started nearly 
nearly every game. He heated up late into the season and was instrumental to Hopkins making it to their only Final Four appearance in the last 13 seasons, and he was making lacrosse look easy. He finished his freshman season with 51 points, the most for a Hopkins freshman in 20 years. After that, Shaq went on to have a pretty solid Hopkins career, starting nearly every game and getting two-time honorable mention All-American honors. He also had the longest consecutive point streak in Division I lacrosse. This one's kind of a toss-up for me, because as a number one recruit, he never really became a lacrosse star, but he was one of those underrated guys who would sneakily have three or four points a game. And he left Johns Hopkins as a top 15 scorer of all time. To me, I'm going to say he met expectations, but I could see the argument either way. So the number one recruit in the class of 2015 was Ryan Conrad out of Loyola Blakefield and a Virginia commit. If you're a lacrosse fan, you know Conrad's name. He was certainly a household name in college lacrosse for UVA. While playing for the Cavs, he was a two-time All-American and really solidified himself as a college lacrosse great during his senior year in 2019 when he garnered first team All-American honors and won UVA's first national championship since 2011. During UVA's run, Conrad put the team on his back with a five-point game against Maryland and three cause turnovers against Yale in the national championship. Conrad dominated on all parts of the field and helped pave the way for what a modern college lacrosse midfielder should look like. He played two ways and he used his six foot 190 pound frame and his cannon of an outside shot. Now Conrad is on the PLL Water Dogs and on the USA Lacrosse Sixes roster, so I think it's safe to say that Conrad exceeded expectations even as a number one recruit. The number one high school lacrosse recruit in the class of 2016 was Jeff T, an attackman from the Hill Academy and Cornell commit. T is most certainly a household name in lacrosse. As a freshman, he broke Rob Pinnell's freshman scoring record and finished with 72 points. He also set the single game freshman scoring record with 11 points against UVA and then broke it again when he scored 12 points against Princeton. He's racked up countless All-American, All-Ivy Leagues, Twerton Award watch list, and pretty much any other college lacrosse award you can ask for. Teams will literally take one defender on their team and try to shut him off the entire game so he doesn't touch the ball. That's how talented this man really is. Without a doubt, Teat surpassed expectations as the number one recruit, and now he's absolutely crushing it in the Premier Lacrosse League. The number one recruit in 2017 was Tahoka Nanticoke, who was dismissed from the Albany Lacrosse Program after having quite the career. Nanticoke burst onto the scene his freshman year, scoring 82 points and leading Albany to their first ever Final Four appearance. He was widely considered one of the toughest covers in all of college lacrosse, and he dominated his matchups. After that, Nanticoke went on to have a pretty up and down next few seasons, with more highlight reel goals and also some controversy. It's tough to judge Nanticoke's career because we never really got to see his full potential with his dismissal and COVID. But overall, I'd say Tahoka performed below expectations, but I'm really hoping that we see him in the Premier Lacrosse League soon. Living up to the expectation of being a number one recruit is extremely difficult, and with the rise of social media, the pressure that high school kids have on them is immense. At the same time, I do think it's cool for the sport of lacrosse that these kids are getting the media coverage, and if you're dedicating your life to becoming a great lacrosse player, media is going to be part of the job. There's so many number one recruits to cover, so if you want me to cover the rest, comment down below for a part two. Also, I read every comment, so let me know what video you want to see next. I'm Jake with Lax Weekly. Go check out Lax now, and I hope you have a fantastic day.